As Mike mentioned, I work at Microsoft where I spend most of my time working on Python tools for Visual Studio. And every now and then we want to do something you know, kind of fun and exciting uh, with some of the other stuff that Microsoft's working on. So today I'm going to be talking about our PyConnect library. And that's just a library around the existing Connect SDK that Microsoft has put out there. And it lets you build cool, fun apps using the Connect uh, with the language you love and know. So, uh, you know, the cool thing about the Connect is that you are the controller, as our ads say. Uh, we call this the natural user interface, where you, you know you just interact by being yourself. And I think kind of you know there's the obvious things that are being done with it on the Xbox. Uh, people building games, and that's kind of what I'm going to focus on today. Uh, but there's a lot of other cool stuff that you could do with it as well. Uh, if you have an existing application that your users are, you know, interacting with in some way, you might be able to take, you know, connect and integrate that with it. Uh, you know, maybe you could build uh, Apple TV before Apple gets it out and have this awesome interactive experience. Uh, maybe you have some other cool new ideas of the sort of apps that you can build with this that no one's uh, thought about. You know, maybe you can be the first person to build a holodeck. Uh, that'd be really awesome. Uh, over in Microsoft Research, some people have already kind of started working on the holodeck problem, but it's at the small scale. Uh, here's a video of uh, the holodesk where it's using a Kinect device and some projection so that you can actually interact with a virtual world move objects around, and they're just responding to you in a very natural way. You're seeing what you're interacting with. It's actually really pretty cool. Uh, the Kinect has a bunch of different sensors on it. So it has a depth sensor and an image sensor. And so using the depth sensor, you can even start interacting with you know, random 3D objects that actually exist in the real world. So it's pretty cool stuff. Um, and I hope you can come up with some pretty cool ideas to do more interesting things with it. To get started with this, you're of course going to need the Kinect device itself. Uh, you can either use the one that uh, comes with an Xbox so that you can buy standalone for the Xbox, or there's now a Kinect for Windows, which has some additional features on it for working uh, close to a computer screen. Uh, you'll need to download and install the, the Kinect SDK, uh, which is available at this link, or you can just search for it. And you'll need to install PyConnect. And this is the wrapper library. We have it available uh, via PyPy. You can just easy install it and get going. Uh, we also have it on our uh, Python Tools for Visual Studio website, where we have some templates and things like that that make it easier to get going writing a game with Pygame. Uh, and I'll show this working both with Pygame and without. You don't necessarily need Pygame for this. Uh, you, can build, you, know, you can build a console Connect app if you really want to, and uh, we can actually see that. Uh, the API here is actually not very complicated. Uh, the Connect exposes a depth camera, a video camera. It gives you skeleton tracking information, uh, which is really pretty accessible and easy to use. It has some uh, microphones on it, and we expose the audio stream to you as well. And we have a thin wrapper around the Windows uh, speech recognition API, so you can quickly get going and add speech recognition to your app and integrate that with the Connect as well. Uh, so I'm just going to dive right in and start uh, using the API here. Um, so um, the first thing is I'm going to bring in the NUI module from the PyConnect package. And we have this runtime class, which you instantiate uh, to interact with the Connect device. So only one uh, process can be interacting with the device at a time. Uh, and so I can use this nice with statement, so it'll get cleaned up with afterwards and all closed. Um, and then the simple, easy thing to do here is actually uh, enable the skeleton engine tracking. And then from there, I can just set up a loop. And I can start getting skeleton engine frames straight away from the Connect. Uh, so I'm going to go in here, and here's our skeleton engine. And I will just simply get the next frame. And I'm going to print that frame out. And that's not print frame. All right, so I will run that. And we just start dumping frames here straight away. Now, this isn't too interesting. I mean, I wasn't standing in the view. And so 
you know, we don't see too much information from this wrapper, and it just is a constant stream of things. I'm going to break into the debugger here, though, so that we can start introspecting at some of this stuff and kind of give you an idea of what this stuff looks like. So here's the frame. Uh, it's got some skeleton data in it. And we can see I've got a bunch of skeletons here, and uh, none of them are tracked. So the connect doesn't know about anyone who's standing in front of it. Uh, but let's go ahead and using this uh, for skeleton in our skeleton data, we can just print out the skeletons. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Clear my breakpoint. And we can see what we kind of saw in the debugger before. Uh, still, uh, not super interesting, but if I step in front of it, you might be able to see a tracked scroll across the screen there. Um, or maybe not. It's going a little quickly. Uh, so, you know, again, I can kind of look at this, and we can see that each skeleton here has the tracking state. And so let's only print out our actual skeletons that are being tracked here. And let's get rid of that frame. And now, as I step in front of it, it's printing out some skeletons. And if I walk away, we'll see it stop doing that. So, you know, in just how many lines of code is this? Uh, 13 lines of code. I'm already interacting with the skeleton tracking. I can, you know, see the pe people who are there in the view. Uh, there's more data in here. I can start digging in and looking at where their individual, where their head is, where their hands are, where their joints are and all of that sort of cool stuff. So it's a really easy API to just get started with. Uh, this is the synchronous version of the API. There's also asynchronous versions of the APIs. So you know, this isn't you know, how you would go about designing a game, right? You don't want to sit there pulling for all of these skeletons over and over and over again. So if you're really going to make a game, uh, you would use the asynchronous version of this API. And I would just define a a method here which receives the frame. And I can give it this callback uh, using in place assignment here. And then we can just take this code and drop it into my handler here. Uh, and let's just wait a long time. So you can see that code. And this is basically the same thing, right? Uh, if I step in front of it. Yes, breakpoint. Ah, oh, the fun of live demos. And we've got the same thing. So if I were to take this and put it into Pygame, what I typically do is I'd have these events, I'd receive these events, and I'd actually just push those into Pygame's main event loop, and then I can just process everything in Pygame all at once uh, and update my state, and life is pretty nice that way. So uh, that is kind of the skeleton tracking. Um, I have a larger demo of this actually using Pygame. Oh. And if I set this as my startup, this will, let me show you what it's going to do first. This actually uses the skeleton engine, it uses the depth camera, and it uses the video camera all together. Uh, and all of these, I'll have a link at the end where you can get the code for all of this stuff. Uh, but if you step in front of it, you can see this is the depth camera right now. So as I move closer to it, um, my color kind of changes. And I've got it rendering my skeleton on top. So as I move around, we see the little stick figure with a gigantic head. I can switch this over to the video camera. <laughs> yeah, I, it lost me. 
Uh, I can switch this over to the video camera, and we can see uh, me live. And you can do a lot of cool stuff with the video camera, because you know where the skeleton is. So if you want, you can get someone's image as they're moving around and project it wherever you want into their game. And you just have their live person there uh, that they can interact with. So uh, that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, we also, you know, there's this API here where I can actually move the camera uh, up and down. And it's a little slow, and you probably can't see it. But uh, as I press up and down, it moves a little bit. So uh, let's actually show you how all of that stuff works here real quick. Um, I'm not going to be typing this time, so no more errors. Um, but as I uh, showed you before, we're using the async way of doing this. And so for both the skeleton engine, the depth frame, and the video frames, we have uh, async callbacks for all of that. Um, and those just end up posting this right into the Pygame event loop. So I can just have my main event loop running, processing all of that stuff. And then, you know, that's pretty simple. Uh, for the skeletons, um, you need to transform the skeleton that's in 3D space into 2D space for drawing it onto the screen. And then you can just draw some line segments and some heads, and you got those rendered. For the video, interacting with Pygame's a uh, little bit weird. It requires this magic incantation to copy uh, the memory from one uh, Connect video surface into a Pygame surface. But you, know, you can just copy and paste that code and uh, get up and running with Pygame real quickly. So that is the API for interacting with the, uh, all of the camera stuff. There's the audio API, which I mentioned before. And I'll just show that to you real quickly. I'm not going to go into it in too much depth. I'm not going to do a live speech recognition demo, because that's going to be prone to failure. Uh, but it's pretty simple. So I can make a speech recognition engine. I can uh, start listening on that uh, on the uh, audio source here. So uh, again, I'm creating my uh, runtime class. And I'm telling it that I use audio. And uh, this is a little scrolled off to the side. But I also create this connect audio source, which lets me do the start and get that file-like object, um, which I can start reading from. But we also have the speech recognition engine. And I can give it the file and just let it start recognizing. And then finally, that can load a W3C grammar file uh, that can specify the words that I'm going to recognize and all of that stuff. And these things can get pretty complex, but you know, this is just match some words. OK. So this is a summary of the API. So we see we have the uh, synchronous versions with the skeleton engine, the depth stream, the video stream that I can call on and just get current images, uh, current skeletons, and so on. We have the async versions where I can give it a callback. And I can take those and pump those into uh, whatever event loop that I'm doing uh, for more classical GUI programming. And we have the camera object, uh, which I didn't show you the code for. So let's take a quick look at that. Um, and that's just real simple. It's connect. There's a camera object on it. It has an elevation angle property. You can get it. You can set it. Uh, the camera also has a maximum elevation and minimum elevation, so you can check and make sure that what you're doing isn't going to blow up uh, and give you an exception back, because the camera won't move. Uh, that goes backwards. Uh, so this is the audio. I mentioned the start returns the file-like object. Um, and uh, you can read from that as you would normally. The audio stream itself is a 16 kilohertz 16-bit uh, PCM audio stream. So that is kind of a little bit limited from what you can do with a full Connect SDK. There's actually a microphone array on here that can uh, do sensing, but we haven't uh, fully exposed that because we are more focused on the speech recognition side of things. That seemed like a more interesting area to look at. Uh, there's also a bunch of other properties that you can control on the audio stream, uh, get rid of echoes and things like that. Uh, we looked at this. Uh, again, this has the same sort of synchronous and asynchronous API that's available for you. So you can do the same thing where you're just listening for events and pumping that into your main event loop and responding to that when you're actually working on a game. Um, 
or if you're just writing a real simple app where you just wanted to, you know, get what word the person listened to and just run off and fire a command, you could do that uh, and just you could start talking to your PC and you know, 20 lines of code. All right, so the real fun part of this thing, though, is uh, building a full game. So uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to build a game. Uh, this game is around 700 lines of code total, and a huge amount of that is actually just dealing with interacting with Pygame, uh, simulating physics of bouncing balls and uh, all sorts of stuff. So let me uh, show you the game without anything going on in it first. So we'll switch over to game as our main thing. And we'll stop the existing thing that's running. So here's my Pi game window. Uh, and I have this kind of cross between breakout and pong. Uh, it's really strange. Uh, so I have all these balls that are bouncing around, and there's these bricks, which, you know, in the classics are a breakout game. Uh, the balls would be uh, knocking the bricks away. Uh, and uh, in a classic breakout game, you'd have bumpers. The connect faces the right way. Um, and you can see, so I can use my left hand, my right hand, to control the two bumpers that are on the side. And I'm using the video camera that's in the middle here, uh, where my face is it's a little cut off right now. But uh, um, you can see it's identifying me as the main player. And so the way the game works is, uh, as the ball hits a white block, it changes to your color. Uh, if you hit it again, uh, you get points. And if you hit your, player, your opponent's face, so it's a two-player game uh, that has a bug, apparently. Um, uh, all the testing, I never saw it, so let's hope we don't hit it again. Um, so it's a two-player game, so there's both red and blue, and uh, they play against each other, and you can hit your opponent's face and change the color on it, and you get a whole bunch of points for doing that. And uh, yeah, so it's real simple. Um, the game itself uh, is using the same basic techniques that I talked about before. So, um, you know, we have our basic uh, event loop. And let me show you that. Uh, Game.play. And so we're just waiting on event from the Pi game. Uh, it could be we're quitting or we're starting a new game, which isn't implemented. I leave that as an exercise to you. Uh, we could have our connect event, uh, where we're going to process our skeletons, or we could have a timer event where we need to update what we're rendering. And um, that's basically it. Uh, oh, and the video frame uh, where we copy that. So um, processing the connect event is, you know, it's running through the skeletons, finding the active skeleton. Uh, there's some fun stuff that we don't do where you know, a player could walk off the screen and they could walk back on, and so somehow you have to figure out, uh, you know, is this the same person or not? Uh, we don't do any of that. We just uh, kind of lose a player and eventually gain another player. Um, so it's, it's really pretty simple. Uh, and, you know, if we look at the bulk of this code, you know, that is kind of the connect code. And, you know, here's collision code and... Uh, if I actually let you see this code. Uh, you can see that most of this stuff is, you know, just all Pi game, uh, basic stuff, drawing blocks, uh, creating balls, setting up the surfaces, uh, fun geometry. I love writing games because it gives me a reason to use uh, geometry. Don't get too many opportunities to do that. And, uh, you know, it's just all game logic, basically. And interfacing with the Kinect is actually very, very simple. So um, at this point in time, is there anyone who wants to play the game? Is there a prize? There's a prize. Uh, if you win the game, you'll get a free Kinect. 
Uh, so you can start hacking on this stuff right away. And there's even a prize if you lose. Uh, you'll get a free copy of Mass Effect 3. So uh, not too useful if... Uh, <laughs> All right, so someone's running down, so we'll do him, and uh, we'll do the guy in the yellow over there. Okay, I'm going to start the game. Um, so, good luck, and you are Tyler? Good luck, Tyler. Eric? Good luck, Eric. Uh, oh, well, okay, let's, let's restart this. <laughs> Hopefully, I saw a scoring problem earlier today, but hopefully we won't have a scoring problem. <laughs> okay, so start moving your hands up and down. Uh, hopefully it will, okay, we've got one of you. Okay, we've got both of you. Okay. So uh, if it hits both of your paddles while they're overlapping, uh, it picks you randomly. So you want to, you know, get rid of as many of your colored blocks and create more of your colored blocks. And if you can get your opponent's head, you're gonna... Am I blue? You're blue. Yeah, yeah. so blue's on the right, yeah, you're blue. <laughs> the cutoff heads. Much harder than it looks. <laughs> uh oh, someone got the bonus. Red, red's winning. Red's winning. They got the bonus points. <laughs> you can heal. <laughs> yes, you can knock your head back. But there's a, there's a, you might not want to do that. You might want to avoid that because then they can hit your head again and then they can get more bonus points. So uh, it might not be the best strategy. So blue, blues. Blue's coming from behind. It's getting close. <laughs> oh, we got some bonus points. Red's in the lead again. Only five more blocks to go. Or six. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, two more, two more, two more. Uh, I, th I think Red's got this. I think Red's got it. <laughs> Bam. Oh, Red wins. Good game. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Wrong one. That is uh, basically my talk. Uh, so if you need to get the Connect SDK for this, yeah, you can get it from that link again. Uh, otherwise, everything else, basically, the slides, all of the code for the demos I showed, uh, PyConnect itself, you can get it from this link, or you can do the easy install thing, which is a little bit easier. This will give you those templates that I mentioned before. And that's basically it. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. If anyone has questions, we've got about uh, five or six minutes for that, so please use the microphone right over here to my left. Looks like we have a couple takers. Hey, thanks. That, that was pretty cool. Um, I'm wondering uh, about us um, old Linux users. Yep. <laughs> What what do you recommend for alternatives and stuff like that? Um, so you know, obviously, there's a lot of people have been doing hacking on the Connect to make it available for other operating systems. Um, you know, I would explore those opportunities. I don't know. I know the skeleton tracking stuff is in the software, uh, the depth camera, the image camera, the audio. Those are probably really easy to expose. I don't know what the state of skeleton tracking is elsewhere, um, and I don't know if you know, we have any plans to change that, so. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Huh? Hi, uh, excellent demo, it was cool. Um, I'm wondering, uh, could you comment a little bit on having to copy the frame into uh, Pygame, and do you consider that to be, um, I don't know, an integration failure, or like what, what how would you solve that uh, design problem? Um, I mean, you know, the memory has to be copied, so, that's not a problem. There's just, uh, I, I think the biggest problem is there, the address of the Pygame frame 
uh, isn't getting exposed in a very natural way. Like, uh, you know, and it's kind of hard to expose that in Python. Uh, so it's not too surprising that it's a little bit wonky. Um, it's not too particularly bad, I don't think, but it'd be nice if they exposed the address in some way that we could hand it off to some code a little bit easier. Um, so would the, is the skeleton tracking just limited to the major limbs? Like would there be some way to expand it to fingers? So like you could do a guitar game where you're like actually looking at, you know, the, the individual finger placement? Uh, I don't know what their plans are. So the way it works is they've actually, you know, they've taken a ton of skeletons and modeled them, and like they have this decision tree that they go through to track. I would think that the same technology would work for fingers. Uh, I would think it would depend a lot on, um, you know, getting the right data set and then doing all of that processing and potentially getting the right resolution on the camera. The newer Kinect devices work better closer, and so they might have better resolution cameras now. Um, I, I think that would be really cool. Yeah, uh, on so the other hand, there's Rocksmith, which is a really awesome game that lets you play with yeah. your own guitar. <laughs> so, so theoretically, I could bug someone enough and it might happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even, so I don't know that an individual bugging someone about it is going to do too much, but I can only imagine that the Connect team wants to recognize more and more and more, right? I mean, because the more immersive the world is, the more you're the controller. And I don't quite know what their plans are, but uh, hopefully... They're thinking about that direction. Can you talk a little bit about the limitations on bandwidth and access to sensors that exist today? Uh, I don't know anything about that, sorry. Have you ever played with Open Connect? No, I haven't. Okay. So openconnect.org. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's the answer for the Linux users. Yeah, Linux, Mac, Windows. <laughs> um, there's a Python wrapper. Um, Does it do skeleton tracking? There's a, there's a framework called OpenNI that I don't actually know that much about, but I've only played with OpenNI plus OpenConnect. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, there are frameworks for skeleton tracking. That awesome. Yeah. Uh, I should probably look at their API and yes. uh, maybe there can be some unification there. Anyone else? Anyone else? What ID were you using? <laughs> he wants to know what ID I was using. I was using Python tools for Visual Studio, uh, which is you know, my day job and what I spend most of my time on. Uh, and so that's where all of the coding was happening and hopefully all of the cool, impressive IntelliSense. <laughs> and it's free. <laughs> and open source. And if you want to make it better, you can. <laughs> OK, there's the plug. I made my PM happy. <laughs> All right, if there are no other questions, uh, I give you back a couple of minutes. Please, everyone, uh, big round of applause and thanks for Dino.